Hopefully you remember the following. If I have a utility function, such as a Cop Douglas utility function, restricting A and B to be strictly positive, then any monotonic transformation of this utility function will represent exactly the same preferences. For example, if another individual has the utility function u squared, that would be x1 to the 2a times x2 to the 2b, this individual will have exactly the same preferences. The indifference curve will be identical, and these two individuals will always agree when two bundles are compared. So let's say that my utility function is x1 to the 3 times x2 to the 2. a plus b is 3 plus 2, which is 5, so this is not a normalized cobb douglas utility function, as this requires a plus b to be equal to 1. However, I can always create a new one by taking u raised to 1 over 5. The function u raised to 1 over 5 is strictly increasing, so this is a monotonic transformation. This becomes x1 to the 3, x2 to the 2, raised to 1 over 5. Take this inside, it's x1 raised to 3 over 5 times x2 raised to 2 over 5. This means that this utility function and this utility function represents the same preferences. However, the utility function v is a normalized Cobb Douglas utility function, as 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5 is 1. Hopefully, this illustrates to you that you can always take a Cobb Douglas utility function and normalize it without changing preferences. Let's see this in general. So, if u is x1 to the a, x2 to the b, Let's create a new one in the same way. So let's do u raised to 1 over a plus b. That is x1 to the a, x2 to the b, raised to 1 over a plus b, which is x1 a over a plus b times x2 b over a plus b. This is a normalized Cobb Douglas utility function, a over a plus b plus b over a plus b is a plus b over a plus b, which is 1. And since a plus b is strictly positive, this is a strictly increasing function, so this is indeed a monotonic transformation. So this means that if an individual has Cobb-Douglas preferences, then we can always represent them with a normalized Cobb-Douglas utility function. So assuming that the utility function is a normalized Cobb Douglas utility function imposes no restrictions compared to assuming that the utility function is any arbitrary Cobb Douglas utility function. There is another important monotonic transformation that we can take on a Cobb Douglas utility function. If I define v to be log of u, where log here is the natural logarithm, then this function is strictly increasing, so I am doing a monotonic transformation of u, creating a new utility function representing the same preferences. v is log of x1 to the a, x2 to the b. We have some log rules. The first one says that if you do a log of a product of two terms, then you can do log of the first one plus log of the second one. Another log rule tells us that if you do log of a power like this, then you can take the exponent in front and write this as a log x1 plus b log x2. So this utility function is another way of representing Cobb Douglas preferences. And in many examples, this function is much simpler to work with compared to this function mostly because it's simpler to differentiate. Here is a summary. Cobb Douglas preferences can be described by many different utility functions. They can always be described by a normalized Cobb Douglas utility function where the sum of the exponents is equal to 1. And they can always be described by a log linear function. u is equal to a times log x1 plus b times log x2. 
Let's have a look at indifference curves for Cobb-Douglas preferences for different values of the exponents. First, we have a Cobb-Douglas utility function where the exponents are equal, in this case, one. I have added a blue line which traces out the bundles where we consume the same amount of both goods. The utility function is symmetric around this straight line and MRS is equal to minus one at all points on the blue line. A consumer with this utility function is willing to trade these goods in a one-to-one -one ratio if she is consuming an equal amount of them. Of course, the indifference curve will look the same if the utility function is the square root of x1 times x2 or log x1 plus log x2 or any other monotonic transformation of u. Next, we have a Cobb-Douglas utility function where the exponent on x1 is greater than the exponent on x2. In this case, the indifference curve is steeper along the blue line and more than one unit of good 2 is required for her to give up one unit of good 1 when she's consuming an equal amount of these goods. You can say that she has a preference bias towards good 1. The opposite is true if the exponent on the x2 term is larger than the exponent on the x1 term. In this case, the absolute value of MRS is less than one for bundles with an equal amount of each good, and she has a preference bias towards the second good.